This is Hydrogen Tap. What you're looking at here is the Aaron Cell 16 plate 3x8 system. The plates are stainless steel. They're 1 8 inch apart, which is about 3 millimeters. The spaces are acrylic one-inch squares that I cut and make myself. This is the new tube I'll be using, which is the PVC tube, which is 12 inches tall. And you can see the same configuration as the 3LR 1000. It's precision cut so that I can use the seal system that I've used in all the others. There's a seal on the top and a seal on the bottom. There's no glue involved. The difference between this cell and the others is that these are 8 inches long. And I've designed a new port system, as you can see here so that there's a through port directly on top to the hydrogen level. So you can pour the water directly into the cell instead of having it side mounted like I did before. Also, one of the problems I had or was worried about was any ignition to the cell, or flashback as we call it. The way the ports are designed, three of the openings there have a cork in them that should blow if there's any flashback. Being the cautious person I am, that's really what's been keeping me from mounting this in the Honda. So you can see how the new ports work there. Also, it's it's a much easier access point to the cell. This unit, or one like it, is the one that I'm going to be testing one of the ones I'll be testing with the Honda. I have five units that I've been working on at the same time. So if it looks like I'm scatterbrained about it, going from one to the other, that's not the way it is at all. You're looking at one test at a time, but actually I have five different units I'm working on. One of the ones I showed you is a flat unit. There are three others that you haven't seen at this point. I have one goal, and that is to get the car running on this hydrogen. On demand is the key word. What we're going to do here is show you the amount of hydrogen, or show you the hydrogen coming out, running at 11.13 volts. Remember, this is a voltage drop. I've had at least one comment about that I'm giving inaccurate information about voltage in that we're running a charging on, charger on the system. The system charger charges about 14 volts, but there's a voltage drop across the cells, which brings it down to the voltage that you see. Hopefully that's the last time we'll have to clear this up. At the very most, I have 14 volts on the system, and that represents the car charge or alternator, which is that's the very minimum that it will be putting on your battery on the car, some a little higher than that. To charge any system, you can see how much gas is coming out of there. To charge any battery, you have to have a higher 
voltage than the battery that you're charging. It will not charge if you have less. Don't even think about it, it won't. So to charge a 12 volt battery, you need over 12 volts. And there's the system there. There's the cell. The cell I'm going to be putting in, or the one representing this cell, it has a water port on the bottom. And on the top, it'll have, we're talking about on the tube itself, it'll have a water sensor. Since the tube isn't clear, you definitely need that. The good news is now that we found out what's causing the garbage that's in the water, the gunk, the sludge, whatever you want to call it, I don't have to worry about the overheating system. I had an email asking what was keep causing my old system to overheat, and that was the garbage that's in the water. If you use straight tap water, the gunk coats the plates, makes a bridge across the plates, which in a sense makes a short, which hires the amount of amperage that goes through the water, and eventually you get an out of control system. So the hotter the water gets, the more amperage goes through it and so forth. It's what everyone is calling spiraling out of control. The water must be kept clean. There you can see by using that new pour, you can just pour the lye into it. The amount of lye I'm using to make this thing run at 30 amps is very, very little. I've been thinking about getting a scale to measure this since obviously I'm not going to count the grains and using a measuring system doesn't really work. It needs to be weight. You can see the safety system there, the ports, by putting the stoppers in there or the corks in there. There's two on the left side and one on the right. They should blow if there's any backfire. I don't know whether that's going to solve the complete problem and probably won't. There's probably going to need to be a bubbler system that goes with this, if not some kind of safety valve. The problem with a safety valve to keep the back fire is that hydrogen explodes so fast, ignites so fast, that I don't believe you're going to get one that's going to, at least in the money range we're talking about, that's going to work fast enough to keep the flame from going all the way into your cell. So the bubbler is probably the best. And what you're doing is putting the hydrogen in the bottom of the bubbler and drawing it from the top. You fill it with water and then you have a very little gap that's got the hydrogen in it. Also the top of the bubbler has got to be able to be blown off. And there's your safety feature. So if there's any back flash, it'll blow the bubbler top off and you're in business, so to speak. You can see the amount of lye that I'm putting in this. It's actually a little bit less than that. And that brings you to 30 amps.